And I think that's where it starts for me in breaking this fight down. You know, the rest of it's easy. Yeah, he went out there. You did it, Ken. He went out there, filled that round. He won the first round, probably Garcia. You know, it looked like he had the right idea, control the range, control the outside. You know, I talked about that. It was a fight of geography from the physical standpoint. He's taller, he's longer. Use those assets, use those attributes. You know, control money outside. Tank Davis is a is a good puncher. Don't let him get close to you. He's a shorter arm fighter. He's a shorter fighter, you know, as far as height. Keep him on the outside. Make him earn real estate. You know, make him pay to get close to you. See if you can get him to reach. See if you can get him to overextend himself. Make mistakes. Set traps. You know, but control the geography. I always talk about the geography. Control the freaking geography of the ring. That's best for you and not as good for him. And he did the first round. It looked like he set his feet. It looked like he was set to do that. And then what happens? The second round, to, to correct your point a tiny bit, I think, where you said he decided to go haywire and just go after. I think that he caught him something. And he, and he just thought, okay, I can end it right here. And he, and he went away from his discipline. If he had that discipline, if his camp did have that. Because they didn't show me that they had the right play. Because Ryan showed me... Uh, um, Tank showed me that him and his team had a good plan. They had a good strategic plan. I didn't see that for the most part except the first round, but I didn't see beyond that, so I don't know how much fate to put in it. I didn't see that from his camp or from his perspective, but from the Tank camp and the Tank perspective, I saw a good battle plan, and they stuck to it. Uh, He, you know... He had to use the jab. Everyone talked about the jab of Garcia, but Tank had to use his jab too. So he didn't get dominated in that area. So he could stabilize Garcia a little bit. So he had to use his jab. He couldn't reach in, so he didn't reach in. He had to try to draw. I In, in our fight plan, which got a hell of a lot of views, and in the last week's episode, which got a hell of a lot of views, I talked about there's two ways for Tank for any shorter man to get to the taller man. One is the traditional way. Go get him. Work your way in. The other way is to get him to come to you. And in the second round, that happened. To lay traps. To step back, give up ground a little bit. Now, he got forced into that situation, Tank. When he got buzzed a little bit. But where he gets tremendous credit from Teddy Atlas is... How he kept his cool, how he kept his mind, how he kept his composure, how he stayed calm in an uncalm environment. And even while he was surviving, he was grabbing, he was doing whatever he had to do, you know, to survive. Garcia was trying to rough him up a little bit, thought he had an edge, thought he could get rid of him, thought he could end the fight right there. He was going after it. And Tank survived that, did what he had to do, but he also had the wherewithal, the mindset, the mindset to know that at some point, Ken, I'm going to get this guy where I want him. Like he thinks he's got me where he wants me. No, 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 no. I do what I got to do to survive getting dinged here. But now he's close to me. And you know what? I'm the spider. I got the beetle in my web. Now I'm going to get a moment now. And I'm ready for that moment. I'm looking for that moment where he's too close now. And I'm going to get a chance to catch him now where I don't have to go chase him. He's here. And sure enough, he had the mindset, again, the wherewithal, the calmness, the brilliance. Brilliance! He's got a brilliant IQ in that ring, Tank Davis. He deserves credit for that. And then the moment came. And I'll tell you where the moment came. They didn't really tell you that. Break it down perfect. For me, it came this way. I always say in the gym, there's do's and don'ts. There's no-no's. One of the no-no's that I'll get in the ring and I'll spend five hours in a row teaching a guy if I have to, where you don't lead with left hooks. I don't care how good your left hook is. I don't care if it's Joe Frazier's left hook. You don't lead with your left hook in front of a guy because when you do, a straight punch can beat you. It's that simple because you leave an opening and you shouldn't give up defense for offense in my world. And anyone's world if they're teaching properly, I believe, in this game of the sweet science, the art of pugilism. It's an art. So that moment came where he led with a left hook, he being, of course, Ryan Garcia. He left because he's been allowed to do that, because it's a habit that forms. 
because it wasn't a habit that was formed the other way. That's it's that simple. So he led with a left hook right in front, and bang, he got caught a counter left hand uh, from Tank Davis, and he got dropped. And, and yeah, things changed after that. He got unsure of himself. You could go down that road. But here's the road I want to go on. I want to go on the road of giving credit to Tank Davis for not only having the right fight plan, but for being the solid. And I've been saying this. I got to tell you. I was the first one, I think, to put him on the pound for pound best fighter list for pound for pound in the top 10 because everyone thought he was just a good puncher. And I remember, I don't know how long ago, maybe a year and a half ago, where I started saying maybe a little longer, but whatever it was, maybe it was two years, whatever, where I, I was saying he's more than just a good puncher. The guy's a complete fighter. He's not getting enough credit for that. He's more than just a guy that goes and gets you. And sure enough, he, You've described him as a complete fighter from the first time he's ever come up on this show in the last like three or four years. Because because I'm I, I'm like most fans, I was like, yeah, he's a good puncher, but he can rub you the wrong way, and he doesn't give you a lot, lot of reasons that. to like him and when he gets win. on. Yeah, right, right. And, right. But that's what I'm telling you. As to a, a, a typical fan, me, I'm like. Uh, he doesn't give you much to like outside of the ring. He's always talking, but you said always, and I, it, it, I remember because I was thinking, oh, he's just a good puncher because when you hear someone being aggr super aggressive and stuff outside of the ring, it always makes, I, it's not my style. So I'm like, I want to see him get beat. And and I remember distinctly you always saying, this guy's a complete fighter and he's smart. He's real smart in the ring. And even Eddie Hearn the other, uh, recently said he didn't. He wasn't intelligent and Tank didn't take kindly to that. But I remember, to your credit, you've been saying he's a smart fighter. He's he's the complete fighter. From the, from the minute we ever described him in the last three or four years, you've been saying that. So Thank you. Well, Ken, I... What I I want to give him his dues, and his dues before Saturday night. He's been this, but what he showed was that he's yeah he's a good puncher. We know that, but in every element of boxing, he showed what you want a guy to show at a high level of ring IQ. And what I mean by that, in every level, he was defensively responsible when he got dinged. He knew how to survive that. He knew how to grab when he had to. He, was, he kept his mind about him. The mental part is the most important part. He kept his mind, didn't lose any confidence, didn't lose any faith. Matter of fact, he saw an opportunity. In a bad thing, sometimes opportunities come. They do. They do. Silver linings and dark clouds. And in the second round where it looked like it was going to be a dominant round for Garcia, he saw an opportunity. Oh, the guy's close to me now. Oh, okay. I'm going to get a chance. I'm going to get a chance. And I'm going to get a chance to catch him. And he did. So he showed those capacities. He also ended up being aggressive. I'll tell you another part that was very impressive to me. And I understood that he had this quality. Where when even when he started go, taking charge after the second round, the third, fourth, fifth round, sixth round was a round where Garcia had a better round. And then, of course, the seventh was the end of it. But uh, he was in control of the rhythm. He, he took control of the fight. But in a smart, deliberate way. He wasn't over-aggressive. If he was over-aggressive, he would have left himself open for a counter shot. He wasn't. He was taking small steps. He was very deliberate, step by step slowly but surely he was getting to him he was putting a pressure on and at the same time as i just said not making any kind of technical mistakes where he was leaving gaps where he was leaving holes to be counted so he was patient he was deliberate uh he was as i said he was uh, you know he his timing was elite his calmness his eyes he's got good eyes you know, he's got those night goggles on that you use in war where you got infrared, you see everything. Where he when he was in, in that uh, seventh round when Garcia again, again, he had no business being that close. It's a battle of geography, my friend. He had no business. And that's got to be drummed into his head in the gym. I'm sorry, in camp. It's got to be drummed into his head. Uh, you, you've been in camp with me. When I had fighters that were too close, that one was supposed to be close, I would jump in the ring. I would j literally jump in. Stop! 
jumping the ring in the middle of sparring, but but I'm doing good. No, you're not. You're not doing what you need to do. You might be doing good on the inside for the next 30 seconds, but 40 seconds from now, he's going to be doing good. You don't belong there. You're not going to win this fight fighting in there. Get on the freaking outside. And then I would let him start sparring again. Yeah, it's a tough business. Yeah, you got to do that sometimes. The consequences are awful unforgiving, awful tough. So I don't care if I got in there and bothered him. I bothered him on purpose to correct something right there when it had to be corrected. Because, and again, the guy might be doing good on the inside. I don't care. If our battle plan was to win the fight and know we had an advantage and a disadvantage on the inside and an advantage on the outside, I didn't let him do it. I didn't let him do it. I don't care if he was having success for a fleeting moment, a fleeting freaking moment. And that's what it was. Where again, in the seventh round, he's in close. You don't belong there. You don't belong there. I don't care if you can win for 10 seconds. You don't belong there. And what happens? While he's there, he throws a punch. And when you throw a punch, you expose something. He exposed his body. He threw the right hand. The elbow came up. He exposed the body. Tank was in close proximity, which he wanted, which it shouldn't have been, but it was. It was good for Tank, bad for Garcia. And what's he do? He times him perfectly. Like Progray said, he's right. He's a fight. He's a champion. He timed him perfectly with a left hand right there, but he knew he was going to get that chance. Why? Because he was in close. He knew that Garcia would probably throw to defend himself, and he knew that opportunity would come. His IQ was there, and Davis is calm. Again, he's got good eyes. He's calm. And what's he do? He throws a perfect... Now, a lot of people didn't even think it was a hard punch. It doesn't have to be hard. It's perfectly timed in the right spot at the right time. And bang, bingo. He's, you know, the, it's, it's over with. Now, 